Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Mastering Options Trading. So today I have brought to you a very important video. Uh, every day I show you this participants data, right? Uh, most of you don't know how to read this, what and all is there in this. So I will try to cover the I will try to cover the basics through this video, right? So first of all, there are four key participants, clients, also called as retailers, which is like us, right? Who bring in little capital to the money could be few lakhs or few crores not not like institutions where we bring in hundreds or thousands of crores right so we are we are all clients or retailers right next category is dis or domestic institutional investors third category is foreign institutional investors and fourth category is proprietary traders right now we'll try to understand who who these people are what do they do and how they do it right it's purely basics for detailed video, you can enroll for my webinar where I cover the uh, data reading secrets, how to understand when it what happens. But from the basics perspective, this is very important, right? DIAs are allowed in the FNDO segment to only use it for hedging purpose, meaning DIAs cannot trade in futures and options as a directional or something like that, right? They can only use it for hedging purpose. They cannot use it for prediction purposes right retailers are actually it's often confused that fis bring in lot of money to the market but that is not true retailers as a whole bring in highest money to the market especially to the futures and options segment right the only problem with retailers is they often have a scattered view right that's the reason we we often say that retailers have lower probability of winning and the bigger players like institutions or proprietary traders have a higher probability and that's the reason every day when we analyze the data right i often say that um, retailers are bullish but we'll consider it as bearish so uh, you can see that i'm taking the opposite view of retailers right that's just to align ourselves with the bigger players like fis or pros now fis despite bringing less money to the market compared to retailers still have a better success rate that is because their view is focused it's not that all FIIs will be bullish or bearish at a point. Like 70-80% or we can just say majority of FIIs are on one side and minority of FIIs on the other side. Since the majority of FIIs are on one side, so we see that they have a focused view and their winning rate is higher. Pros are nothing but the proprietary traders who, who do the trading for their own money, right? Basically, I don't want to name any institution, but they have their own proprietary desks where they trade for themselves. And they're especially people with lot of money, but typically try and eat uh, smaller premiums in the market. Like if you see far OTMs on any option chain or anything, those are mostly done by proprietaries, proprietary traders. They're especially strong around the expiry days. That is because they get to eat a little premium, but the risk is very high. Since they are people with the higher capital, they ensure to get their profit despite selling options at a lower premium. That's why they are strong around expiry days. Now, the, the process that I follow for my daily prediction is purely a combination of this participants data and these charts, right? It gives a very higher accuracy compared to simply using data or simply using charts. Now, what is important is where to get this data, how to track it and all. So basically, if you Google search as NSE participant wise open interest data, in the first link itself, you will get this data. I track this data every day. So that's why I'm in constant touch of how the market is moving and I understand that. So for your tracking purpose as well, you can create an Excel sheet and continue to work on it. Now, let's take an example. But before I take an example, a few important things that you need to know. So there will be index futures, there will be index calls, there will be index puts. These three are major considerations for me. But apart from this, there will be stock futures, stock calls and stock stock puts, right? So I'm ignoring those for the reason that some of the years stock futures or stock options have higher correlation with the market. Some years it has completely opposite negative correlation with the market. Since it is not constant at any point, so that's the reason I generally don't consider stock related data for my index analysis, right? I mostly trade on Nifty or Bank Nifty. Now, 
the very 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 important thing whenever you see this right first and foremost thing be color blind do not get confused with the colors the colors will lead to all the confusion the moment you see all of this as black and white it becomes pretty easier now i'll explain you with a couple of examples as well all right let's take index futures for example before that the numbers you see are often confused by people with various saying that these are num not number of lots these are number of contracts that this each contract can be of m many lots and things like that don't get confused plain and simple these are nothing but the number of lots so if i say 4721 that means 4721 lots of index futures were added by the retailers it's one contract or one lot you can consider anyway don't consider that this is just a number that can be more than that no it's just 4721 means 4721 only now let's take a these three columns indicate how was the data data two days ago how was the data one day ago and how is the data today let's assume we are on 23rd february which is a friday right this is the data at the at the end of friday this is the data at the end of thursday and this is end of wednesday why we use three columns is just to understand the trend right um let me show you if there is anything interesting so if you see fis put logs they have moved from 132000 to slowly to 23000 and slowly to 214000 so they are increasing their puts so somewhere there is a chance of a fall that's why they are expecting and they are adding the put logs we just try to understand the trend right that's why we take three days data here what is these two columns is this is the long sided and this is the short sided only on 23rd of february now coming to this three segments index futures index calls and index puts now one example we'll take on 23rd retailers added 4721 longs future longs right 4721 and they added 2336 fresh shorts what is the difference you see 1935 now what was it one day ago it was 65000 783 so i will add this 65783 so this is coming to 67718 sorry for the minor confusion i did a minor mistake here i had to take 4721 minus 2336 right so the value is 2385 now what was it before 65783 so 65783 so if you add this now what is it coming up to 68,6168? That's the figure we see here. Now how to understand whether it's positive or negative? So wherever you see in these three columns a positive sign, that means it is long. Wherever you see minus sign, that means it is shorts. Since retailers have added more longs compared to shorts, that's why the net figure is plus 2,000 whatever we saw, and that's the reason it has moved from 65,000 to 68,000. Let's take another example. Let's take proprietary traders. Now, also just to give you a simple example, let's say I am long on 200 lots and I am short on 100 lots. My net quantity will be plus 100. Let's take the opposite case. I am short on 200 lots, but I am long on 100 lots. My net quantity is minus 100. So, if you say the proprietary traders, right? They have added 1694 longs. So, 1694. Minus they added three thousand eight hundred and ten shorts. So what is the net quantity? Two thousand one one six is the net quantity. The previous day we had minus nineteen seventy five. If you see this one, right? This column. So what will it be? It will be minus four thousand ninety one. This is exactly the number here. So it's the same calculation for all the three segments. You can try it out, and that's how we. Uh, analyze the numbers. Now what we typically do is these are short term, right? This only gives the expectation of the market for the immediate day it's not for for the full day for one side one time it will happen for example on 23rd we see that bearish data so monday one expectation is it will fall that's the bearish expectation you can go back and check the yesterday's video you will get to know how we expected that right so these are the very basics uh, practice every day once you do it for at least 15 to 20 days i am very sure you will start to understand this data better and try to correlate the market very much better this entire combination along with the charts is going to be very high accuracy and that's the reason um me or the webinar participants are able to predict and take advantage of it for more details on this you can enroll to my paid webinar i hope this video is helpful thank you all